The world of cross-platform app development is in panic mode. <laughs> I'm in danger! ByteDance, the company behind TikTok, has announced Lynx, a blazingly fast, Rust-powered JavaScript framework designed for multi-platform app development. At a first glance, React Native and Flutter devs are in big trouble because Lynx promises to finally solve one of the biggest issues that causes constant frustration both for developers and end-users. But if you are like me, you probably grew tired of the same old sales pitches and the over-exaggerated hype some people drum up every time a new framework drops. So let's spend the next few minutes on an honest review of the Lynx family of technologies and see if the much-praised rendering engine and dual-threaded UI pipeline are really making a difference when it comes to performance. For a bit of context, devs have been trying to solve the problem of performance in non-native apps for a long while. This explains the recent shift towards cross-platform solutions instead of hybrid apps, which were just glorified web apps wrapped in a native container. However, the current cross-platform frameworks are far from perfect. Let me explain. The promise of better performance is the reason Flutter took the industry by storm a few years back when it introduced its own rendering engine, which bypasses native UI components entirely. Instead of relying on system UI elements, Flutter follows an approach called pixel-perfect rendering and paints everything from scratch, offering smooth animations and better performance. These achievements come at the cost of larger app sizes, since you are basically shipping an entire graphics engine with your app. The other big player in the space, React Native, took a different approach aimed to balance performance with flexibility. Instead of redrawing everything from scratch, React components are translated to their native equivalents, offering the look and feel of a native app without requiring platform-specific code. For a long while, React Native used to rely heavily on an asynchronous bridge to communicate between JavaScript and native threads. In order to render a component or call a native function, the JS code would send serialized messages across this bridge, which the native side would pick up, process and respond to. This approach allowed cross-platform compatibility, but introduced some performance limitations, like delays in updating the UI or in processing frequent interactions. To alleviate this problem, the React Native team spent six years fully redefining its architecture and duping their asynchronous bridge dependency. In its latest version, React Native offers a direct synchronous link between JavaScript and native code. This is powered by the new JavaScript interface and a C++ core, which provide faster communication and more efficient handling of complex animations, transitions, and real-time user inputs. This should give you an idea about the work and effort put into building tools that allow you to write JavaScript once and generate native Kotlin or Swift in return. So let's see if Lynx can do better. Interestingly, one of Lynx's architects is a former member of the React core team and was involved in shaping the evolution of React Native. This gives Lynx an edge as it's built with first-hand experience of the challenges that played previous frameworks. Lynx promises to take cross-platform development a step further by removing the JavaScript bottleneck entirely. At its core, it works by separating UI rendering from the main application logic, meaning UI updates can happen independently of JavaScript execution. This is a huge deal because in most frameworks, the main thread is responsible for both logic and rendering, which leads to jank, input lag, and dropped frames. So the Lynx architecture imposes a statically enforced division of user scripts into two distinct runtimes. First, a main thread runtime powered by PrimJS is dedicated to privilege synchronous UI tasks like initial launch and high-priority event handling. Second, a background runtime will usually execute the user code, ensuring the main thread remains low workload and non-blocking. Thanks to these implementation details, Lynx comes with two big promises. On one hand, it supports instant first-frame rendering, which means that your page can display content directly when it is loaded, without a white screen or other intermediate states. On the other hand, Lynx allows statically scheduled small code to run on the main thread in order to handle high-priority events, gestures and animations. OK, now for the really fun part, let's see Lynx in action. We can easily start by running the npm create command and go through the setup wizard. The really exciting bit is that Lynx offers an Explorer app you could use to seamlessly test your code on an actual device. Just download Explorer and drag it into your simulator. Once your app starts, paste in the provided URL in Explorer, and now you have a test environment with hot reload. This is a big step forward in the development process, since configuring runtimes for hybrid and cross-platform frameworks is notoriously hard in most cases. Let's now go ahead and open the app.tsx file. It is worth mentioning that while Lynx primarily targets React, it is not limited to it. It is designed to be framework agnostic, allowing developers to use various other front-end frameworks. In the app file, at least two things should have caught your eye immediately. First, the UI is composed of elements like view, image or text. 
These are built-in elements provided by the Lynx engine in order to help you build pages quickly and they have a counterpart on the native platforms. Of course, if the built-in elements can't meet your needs, you can easily expand Lynx's capabilities by implementing native elements directly. The element tags in the source code will be parsed by the Lynx engine at runtime and translated into elements for rendering. Second, in Lynx you can style your app using plain old CSS. This is something rather rare in the world of cross-platform development, where styling is usually handled via JavaScript objects or Dart-based widget properties. Ok, next, let's remove the app.tsx starter code and build a small app that allows us to view Star Wars characters and add them to a favorites list. We'll begin by defining a character list state property and a use effect hook which will run when the component is loaded. Here, we'll fetch the list of characters from the Star Wars public API, parse the result and build a list of characters. Note that this is the exact dev experience you are used to from building regular web apps. For the view, we'll use the built-in list element and for each character we'll define a list item that loads in the image card component. The image card component is pretty straightforward. It simply uses the character image as the source of the built-in image component and the like icon to allow users to add images to their favorites list. Finally, we'll look at a couple of interesting bits in the like icon component. First, we'll register a tap listener to capture events and change the state of the liked flag. Lynx provides an event mechanism similar to the web, allowing us to design and implement custom interaction logic based on events. However, unlike the web system, Lynx's event response mechanism supports dual-threaded processing. In other words, in order to optimize performance and response times, event handling functions can be executed in the main thread or background thread as needed. In practice, on some low-end devices, scrolling and animations might not feel smooth. This happens because touch events occur in the main thread, while event listener code runs in the background thread. This causes delayed touch event responses. To fix the problem, you can move your code on the main thread, either via the special binding attributes or via the main thread tag. It should go without saying that you shouldn't abuse this mechanism. The main thread script increases code complexity, since the two threads run in isolated environments and need special bridges to communicate. For the heart icon, we'll simply import the heart images from our repository and pass them to the source tag. Note that this whole dev experience is extremely familiar. On top of that, we can define animations and transitions directly in the CSS rules and these will be translated on the app as well. So this should give you an idea about what links can do for you. It is also worth mentioning that Lynx is already used in production in some projects, but since it transitioned to an open source just recently, there is no real ecosystem built around it yet. In my opinion, while promising, Lynx has to evolve and get some proper open source contributions before we can reliably commit to it. The performance aspect, while important, is still not enough to justify the lack of community libraries. If you found this video useful, you should watch one of these ones next. Until next time, thank you for watching.